few times, I mean, in fact. Well, I've been to America eight times, and, and four of those times incorporated a trip to Canada and America. Yeah. Uh, well, out there, they're quite uh, assumed to be pensive enthusiasts. Tell me, how do their pigeons rate with the British birds, in your opinion? Well, there's quite a lot of enthusiastic fanciers that are over there. Yeah. And a lot of them hold Bill Pensum in very high regard. Yeah. It's just, it's just the minority that, that uh, through jealousy, are his critics. But the pigeon fanciers in general, uh, they have some very, very good pigeons over there. Collectively, they got a little bit to learn. I find that, in the main, the American pigeon fanciers uh, leave a little bit to be desired when it comes to management. They just haven't got that necessary knowledge of how to handle the pigeons and how to get the best out of them. Do you think that little extra went when Bill Pensum died? Do you think they well, needed the tutor I again? I think had Bill Pensum been around today and still been in America to advise these people, I yeah. think it would be beneficial to them, to them to have had Bill around to show them how to manage a kit and how to fly them and get the collective performance. It's, Individually, yeah. they've got some fantastic pigeons, but collectively, from what I find, there's much to be desired. And bear in mind, I've just been, I've just come back from America yeah. and uh, British Columbia now. How long did you spend out there? 44 kits of pigeons. How long was you out there, Bill? So I am in a position to make uh, a comment on this. Out of the 44 kits, was the, what was the ratio of good and bad, in your opinion? More bad than good. More bad than good. Yeah. What do you put this down to? Lack of dedication, do you well, think? Well, dedication comes into it, yes. But knowledge. One of the biggest handicaps the American fancy has got, the enthusiasm there, but the big handicap in as much, as far as I can see, we got too many do-gooders over there that seem to write at great length. They're fantastic writers, but they can only write about it. They can't show people. What the American people are looking for is the guidance in as much as people to show it, not uh, It's been said in books and by people who have visited here that the Americans are uh, hung up on pedigrees. Is there any truth in this? Well, they are bogged down on pedigrees, a lot of them are. Yeah. But as I say to these people when I was over there, pedigrees are very important. I wouldn't breed up a pigeon that hasn't got a pedigree. But I don't go shouting about pedigrees and showing people pedigrees of certain pigeons in the background. Mm. To me, the pedigree of the breeder is much more important than the paper pedigree of the pigeon. So obviously the pigeon comes first, the pedigree second? Is that, is that what you honestly think? Well, the pigeons... <laughs> in some cases the pigeons come first, but in some cases I go to... Well, you go to lots and they bring out a bunch of photographs and a bunch of pedigrees and all they're concerned about is going back generations to pigeons that primarily, or supposedly, first of all, came from Pensum or in, 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 in certain cases, direct from England. Now, the pigeons direct from England are so far removed and they've been through so many hands and made it from so many different pairs, they should now be talking about what their, their own capabilities are and, 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 and what they are capable of producing thereby putting the pigeons into the air and the bloody paper pedigrees away in the drawer and just keeping them for reference and let the pigeons do the talking for us.